Okay, so I spent most most of my programming time today um, figuring out a sort of algorithm to determine the wind condition for us to make a road. Um, I'm not going to go too into depth with what I'm thinking of doing, but basically we need to check for a horizontal wind and check for a vertical wind. Um, we have to separate these things because it's too complicated to cycle through every possible condition for any possible road. So we're limiting it to see if we win horizontally and then see if or see if we win vertically. Um, and the, the thought process behind this is instead of last episode, I was talking about starting at one side of the board and kind of adding a branch every po every different possible scenario to see if it makes a road, but we're not going that route. Um, that route kind of led us in some like recursive hell. So I'm thinking the better way of doing it is to kind of either prove that there is a road or prove that there is not a road and kind of go based on those two things. So instead of like testing every possible condition, whether or not there's a road, instead we're going to be like, hey, if, if we can prove there's no road, don't even worry about it. And if we can prove there is a road, then we're, then we're, we're done. So I think that's going to be a much better way to tackle it than my initial idea of kind of branching out every possible road path and checking to see if it connects. So the first thing we're going to do is our horizontal wind function. So the, fir the very first thing we want to do, I broke it up in these little bullets of steps. And the very first thing we want to do is uh, we know that there's a horizontal wind if and only if there's at least one stone control in each column. So like we can't win unless there's a stone in our player's control in every column. If there's not, then we know there's no road, at least horizontally, and then we can move on. So hopefully today we're going to be able to get just this, like, like, hey, is there a stone in every column for the given player? And if so, then, um, then we'll move on to the next step to check for a road. So I guess we would want to define this horizontal win in our play state here. Um, yeah. We're going to want, it will, we'll make it our last function before our update function. So right here, we'll have a function called determine horizontal win. Now we need to take in the player type so we can check for a certain player and a certain player's stones. So like if we just do it for our white stones right now, then um, we would want some way of saying, once we pass in the player, then we can say, if player is one, then we're gonna be checking for stone control equality to white string. I believe that's our stone control of our occupant, um, I think becomes a string of all caps, white or black. Just verify that. Stone control. No, no, no. It would be um, stone control is an occupant field that is our. Yeah, it's not stone control, it's stack control. That's what it is. Stack control is the string of, of who, who owns the stack. So it's it's an occupant field. No, 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 I mean, it's a, it's a field in our occupant instantiation equal to a string. 
So in our notes here, instead of stone control, we want stack controls. So we would just replace all this with stack controls. Okay. So in our horizontal win, we take in a player, and a player is a is a integer one or two, one being white, two being black. So we'll say, um, you know, we'll have to do. Um, white win logic and then black win logic. So white win logic, the first step we're doing is determining if there is a stack control in each of our columns. So we need to cycle through every row in every column and, and then um, apply some sort of variable to true saying column one control true column two control true or false you know um, so we know we would need a nested for loop because we need to cycle through every single grid so we'll say for i gets one comma five and then the nested for j j gets one comma five and then we're asking for a grid at IJ dot stack control is equal to white because this is for a white win so if 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 any of the columns if any of the columns of our first row is a stack control of white then we're going to modify the first and I, um, what do we want to do? We want to say something like, um, we want a variable according to this I. Like, how would we do that? We want to say column one, column, column one variable would get true because we should probably be more verbose than this. Like we would say column one stack control would get true. Um, but this would go for every single column. So we want this to be dynamically I, but how would we do that? We can do, we could do a column. Hmm. I don't know. Cause we can either, Oh God, I don't know. Um, I don't know what to do. <laughs> we can do some, some crap. We could do some crap saying if, if I is equal to one and stack control is white, then we say column one stone control gets true. But we don't really want to say else if I is two, else if I is three. It's just bad programming, but 
I'm not sure how to dynamically insert an I into like a variable name because we kind of need them defined. Um, and I mean, we could we could make another class called column stone control and each each horizontal column stone control or something and each um, instantiation of that class would have a boolean Stack control, not stone control. Um, yeah, if we had another class called horizontal columns, horizontal column stone control. See, and I'm worried about, I didn't want to get this data so separated if we have different data in different classes, we have to make sure to wipe all and reset all of those different datas and the different stuff. Whereas if they're all globals like this, we can kind of just keep track of how many globals we have and make sure we falsify each one at the end of every check. Um, I don't know the best way to do it. I know this is disgusting to do it like this. <laughs> I might be just too tired to know a better solution right now. I mean, I'm sure this is just ridiculous. I know this is awful. Um, but basically what this is doing is cycling through every grid and if any of the rows in each column these eyes are the rows so if any of the rows has a column that has if any of the rows has or if any of the columns have any row that is a stack control of white we're going to change that column stack control to true. <laughs> we do this nasty else if with brute force because I don't know how to dynamically insert variable names. Like, ideally, we put this, ideally, we say whatever I is, that's the, that's the number of which variable we're trying to um, change. But I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to insert a variable here and have that variable turn into a string and have that string be evaluated as a contiguous string. Of, that is a variable that we've established already. If that makes sense, I don't, I don't know. I'm sure I'm overthinking this or just being silly about it, but I just don't know what else to do right now. Now, we might have done this backwards. in terms of the eyes. So if we're cycling through, I is the row, first row. Yeah, we're doing this backwards. We want to say the J. Um, so this loop goes through all the rows. So we'll start out the loop in the first row Yeah, this is backwards. Oh, grid row. 
this loop would make the very first grid grid 1 1 which would be our top left it'd make the next one grid 1 2 which would be the same row one over so we don't want to do that we want to check we want to check all the rows so I think we want it want it backwards like this because now grid 1 1 would be first it go through the second nested loop right yeah so the second one would be 2 1 which would be second row same column third row same column fourth row same column so then we want the if the row number see no this is different this is ah oh, this is I'm so why am I making this so hard but basically row one one stack control is white if that's stack control of white so if J is one Then, yeah, if stack control is white, then if our J was one, then we know. No, no, we, we'd want this I now that we swapped, now that we swapped our variables. Because the I is actually the column. So we're cycling through every row and then if the column is one, then our column one stack control will get true. If our I was two, so if our column was two on any J uh, with a true white stack control, then we want our column two to get true. Okay, I think that's right. Column five stack control and get true. <laughs> okay. So this might be all we need to determine if we have any, we, we are basically just, um, at, we, yeah, we would want to say we would cycle through all of our, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this. We want to ask every one of these and if they're all true, um, then we can update a boolean called horizontal column stack control white gets true or whatever the heck we want so we can say i mean i'm sure there's a better way but if this is true and we need five of these so four more If all these are true, then um, then we would say horizontal column check would get true. I mean, we can be more verbose about this. We could say it's. Because what we have in our notes is is saying check for stack control in each column. So horizontal column stack control check. So in a horizontal in a horizontal check, we're checking all the columns, we're checking all the stack controls, and depending on our player, um, we run this for each player regardless of. We run this for each player, um, so the same variable will modify 
this same horizontal column stack control check will be the same variable for each player, but we need to run, run like since we pass in whatever player, um, this variable will help us check if, if this player actually won. So maybe, and, and right now this is, we do take it a player. Um, I'm gonna comment this out for the moment. So right now it doesn't take an argument because we're just checking white. We just want to check that um, this horizontal column stack control check is getting populated if there is a stone in every column horizontally, yeah. So we need to initialize all these to false and initialize this one to false. So we'll just add those to the very end here. So we need five of these. We need our horizontal column stone check to get false as well. Now, not what I wanted. How did I do that? This just isn't even worth it. This isn't worth it. Just literally just type it. Initialize those variables, we set them to false. So we need to run this check. Um, I think we need to initialize these to false every time we call the function so that we don't accidentally, because it depends, you know, since the grid's occupants can change over time, depending on the movements, we need to flush these every time we check. So the first thing we do is flush them all to false. And then, then we um, go through the list and modify them to true. If they are in fact true, then if they're all true, then this horizontal stack control check would be true. So we just need to run this function anytime right before we swap players need to run this function. So um, if we go to every time we player swap, we go to every time we player swap, right before we player swap, we're gonna ask if we determine a horizontal wind. because we don't want to swap players if placing a stone there caused a win. So we want it right before that. Now. Okay. So now we want to print to our screen the value of this. And hopefully, if there is a white stone control in all columns, that would become a true. And if that is the case, then we did at least our job for the day. So I'm going to take this line. We're trying to view that variable. So I'm going to call it column stack 
H column stack control check. We're going to concatenate it with a string of that boolean printed up at the very bottom here of our debug3 option. So let's, let's make sure our board is clear. Is. What? Oh, my bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. Okay. So, H column stack control check false. Um, now, I'm actually also. Well, okay, yeah, well, I was going to say I'm going to stop changing players upon placement to make it easier, but we can just do this. So, H column stack check is false. I'm hoping if I put it here, or here, or here, or here, here, meaning we have one in each column, it would be true, um, and it's looking like it's not. So, we... Um, this this function is just not working. So So I guess let's make sure that the grid has stack control of white and then um because we, we call this anytime we're about to swap player. So as soon as we place that fifth stone before it swaps the player, it resets all these values. And then it cycles through. Um, and it cycles through all the rows first, checking for stack control of white. And if it, if that, if any of those rows has a stack control of white, it sets the column, it sets, well then we're asking which um, column we're in. And if we're in the first column, then column one stack control gets true. Yeah, this is, this is what I meant to do. Um, and then we would swap the horizontal column stack control check to true right before we swap players. And as long as the horizontal check isn't getting swapped to false in our player reset, which it isn't just in our reset board. So yeah, I'm not sure why it's not working. I'm gonna try this way just for giggles. Nope. Nope. Um. Yeah, it's just, um... Just not working. Um... I want to make sure we've got stack control of white here when we play stuff. Yes, we do. What if we change this, like, just to see if any of these are working? <laughs> if there's a, if there's a white stack control in any of our columns, um, that variable should get set to true, which isn't even working. So something's going on. 
where is this getting set to false where it shouldn't be? We have it turned off here. What the heck is happening? It's 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 just false all around. It's none of these are getting set. Initialize it as true. It's true. How are we messing up every single line of our function? It's called determine horizontal win. Calling it. We're calling it every time we swap a player. We're not, okay, here's the problem. We're not calling it in a move type place. We're only calling it in a move type move. We forgot that our move type place isn't using the swap player function, so that's our bad. Yeah, right here. We need to do it right here. So before we swap players, we need to run that function. Um, and it's not, it's not this function, it's determine horizontal win function. Okay, now we're actually calling that function because we weren't before. So let's make sure we're false here. Let's make sure we're false. Uh, right here. And then we'll play it again. Okay, so false. We're looking in for it to be true. Oh, we're true. I forgot we uh, we did this. Okay. So we're looking for that value to be true if there's a white in every column, which right should be true now. It is. Okay. Now, if we put a black over it, it should take it away. And it does. So now let's try any random column. Like, it should work as long as there's one in any column. It should be true. And it is. And if we cover it up with black, it's false. Okay, cool. So that's, we've got at least the first step for our white control. So the whole idea here is like, we're trying to prove a road. So the very first thing we know a road, at least for a horizontal lock would have one color of, of control in any, um, in, in every grid. So um, we want to make sure, see it's false right now, if we drop a standing stone there, um, it's true. Because it's asking for um, stack control. But we want to exclude standing stones because they don't count as a road. So we need to say, hey, that grid stack control has to be white, and that grid that grid that grids um, stone control cannot be equal 
to that of a standing stone. So as long as it's, we, we've got control, uh, actually, stack control, no, oh, yeah, and stone control. So we have, our color has control, and that, that stone control is in a standing stone, then go ahead and do that. So now let's check that. So we're trying to prove a road could possibly exist. And we do that. See, it shouldn't be true there. get why that's not working. We're still, we're, we're still a stack control check, even though we're asking for stone control to not be equal to standing stone if we're going to set that column. I don't get, I don't get that. Get that. I really don't get that. It shouldn't be executing. It shouldn't be executing. If we ask more explicitly, not the knots, but the uh, our stone control. Would have to be equal to a lay stone or don't like combining so many conditions so maybe we say here if 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 our stone control of that grid is a lay stone or a capstone then let's go ahead and check our stack control and if we do have see it should be the other way around We're first asking stone control, stack control, and then if we have stack control, then we're going to check if that grid has an appropriate stone control. And if so, it's a stone control of a standing stone, or a lay stone, or a capstone, then we're going to modify those things to true. Otherwise, if it's a standing stone, it wouldn't do, wouldn't set it to true, ideally. So let's see. Um, we're looking for this to stay false, and it does. Yet, if we put a, a lay stone there, it's still false. Um, and then it became true, so it's just jacked. Dude, this is going to be so hard. I thought this was going to be the easiest. I mean, this is the easiest thing to check in our...
How would that not be true? What? Why would it become true when we put a black stone over there? Dude, that makes zero sense to me. We're only modifying... I don't know, man. I'm not going to figure this out tonight. All right. It's a lot harder than I thought, even for the most simple part. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to kind of rethink my choices on how to implement this. With five variables here. I don't know of another way to do it, but I'm going to kind of rack my brain and try to figure out a better implementation of this because we're it's just not working um yeah i'm just yeah it's not um we'll figure it out i mean i it's just a little disheartening that the easiest step is giving me so many problems so um We'll get to it. We'll 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 get it figured out. It's just um Yeah. I'll I'll try to program earlier in the day tomorrow, have more energy. Let's say we started to horizontal win condition checks. Okay, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll hopefully get better work than today done, but um, the main part that was so hard to figure out was just getting a game plan for determining a win. Uh, and we've got the game plan, now we just need to execute step by step. So we're still on step one, but there's only you know X amount of steps. So all we gotta do is just get through each one and then we're done. Yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.